Welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Bethel Assembly, located in Oshawa, Canada. Our mandate is to spread the good news and to influence our surrounding communities. We hope your time in this place of worship, love, communion, service, and community will be a glorious and life-transforming experience. This is a place for your entire family, a place for you and me. We are a community church that deeply cares about you. All ministries were created to meet individuals' needs. In Bethel Assembly, we are a Bible-believing church charged with spreading the Word of God throughout the region of Doab. We are interested in your God-given potentials and wanted to help you to be able to fulfill your God-given destiny. We, we care about, about you. Welcome to your battle experience. I'll be speaking briefly on divine fruitfulness before we go into the anointing. John chapter 15 from verse 1 to verse 6. The book of John chapter 15 from verse 1 to verse 6. Amen. Amen. Are we ready? John chapter 15. Jesus said, I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man. Let's read it in uh, NIV. So that some of us will understand the word husband man. Exactly. I am the true vine. And my father is who? The gardener. Amen. Verse 2. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does not bear fruit, it prunes. That does bear fruit, it prunes. So that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Verse 6, which is the last one. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. The month of September is the month of our divine fruitfulness. Praise God. Amen. Now when we're talking about fruitfulness, we're talking of harvests. Of a plant, praise God, from a seed. When you plant a seed, what you are going to harvest is not that seed, correct? You are going to harvest the fruit of that plant. In this year of perfect jubilee, for as many that may not understand, when God declared to the children of Israel, the land must have a jubilee, the land must have a rest, correct? And when the land is resting, every nourishment that has been lost will be what? Will be replenished. So that by the time you now begin to harvest, that harvest is not going to be ordinary harvest. It will be bountiful, it will be abundant, it will be an overflowing harvest. Praise God. Talking about fruitfulness. In Genesis chapter 1, let's read from verse 26. Genesis chapter 1. After God created man in his own image and likeness, God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, so that they may do what? Uh, let's go back to KJV. God created you and I in his own image and likeness. And God gave you and I dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, 
27. God has given you what? Dominion. Amen. In verse 27. Verse 27. We're going to 28. So God created man in his image. In the image of God created him. Male and female created he them. So when we're using the word man, female are not what? Excluded. Amen. And the first blessing in that verse 28, and God blessed them. Who did God bless here? Who did God bless here? Man and woman. Praise God. And God blessed them and said unto them, what is the first blessing? Church, can you repeat that again? The first blessing. Be fruitful. And more. You see, when you are fruitful, the rest will follow. You will multiply. You will replenish the earth. You will subdue it. You will have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. The first commandment, the first blessing to you is that you must be fruitful. Praise God. Now, do you know why God commanded this? Let me say this, brethren. We were created to be fruitful. Designed by God to be fruitful. Ordained by God to be fruitful. And even commanded by God to be what? And so you and I have no excuse, no reason not to be fruitful. Praise God. So please tell your neighbor again, you have no reason. You have no excuse not to be fruitful. God did not just want you to be fruitful. Amen. If you go back to our text, God wants you to be fruitful. And there are levels of fruitfulness. That's not the scope for today. Amen. But I'm here to tell somebody, you must be fruitful. Amen. And you will be fruitful. Amen. Praise God. God wants you to be a fruit. In verse, go to verse 2 of uh, chapter 15. He cuts every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, God wants you to bear fruit. That means you will be fruitful. Amen? If you go to verse 5, you are not just going to be fruitful. Dimensions now of fruitfulness. You will be fruitful. Amen? Verse 5. Can we move very quickly? Verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear how many fruits? Is it just fruit now? Levels. God wants you to bear fruit. He wants you to bear much fruit. Praise God. Go down to verse 8. Hallelujah. He said, this is to my father... Uh, let's go back to KJV. This is to my father's glory. That you will bear much fruit. Hearing is my father glorify. That you will bear what? Much fruit. When you start from fruit, more fruit, more fruit. But that's not the end. In Genesis chapter 17 verse 6. Genesis chapter 17 verse 6. When God was talking... To Abraham, when God called him. And God said, I will make thee, how? Exceeding fruitful. From fruit, to more fruit, to much fruit, to exceeding fruitful. Dimensions. But that's not the focus today. Brethren, you have no reason not to be fruitful. But I want us to focus on just... One or two things that I want you to do. Because fruitfulness has condition. Amen. Conditions for what? For fruitfulness. But before we go into that, let me say this. When God blessed man in the beginning, and he said you and I must be fruitful, I'm sure we remember what happened in the garden when the enemy came. In order to steal the fruitfulness of man. Man willingly surrendered. Man willingly gave over the dominion that God gave to us, to the enemy. 
But I'm here to tell someone that by this anointing, your dominion is being restored. Amen. I said, your dominion is being restored. Amen. Conditions to be fruitful. Number one, you must be planted. Amen. Be what? Let me use another word. You must abide in the vine. We read that in our, our text. Praise God. It says, abide in me. What does it mean to abide? To be planted. When you are planted in the Lord, there is no way you will not bear fruit. He says, abide in me, John 15, verse 4. Abide in me, and I in you. You cannot bear fruit of yourself. Do you know why? Because you and I, we are a branch in the vine. If the branch decides not to stay with the vine, what will happen? It will wither off and will not be able to bear fruit. But when you abide in the Lord, you will bear fruit. And so for every one of us, that's the first condition. You want to be fruitful. You have been decreed and commanded to be fruitful. Abide in the vine. If you go to the book of Psalm 92, from verse 12, Psalm 92, from verse 12, as the righteous. It says you will flourish out like the palm tree. You will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Now, for some of us that knows the history of the palm tree, when you plant the palm tree, it doesn't just grow in one year. Not two. Not three. Not four. From the fifth year. Amen. Praise God. And when you plant tomato, in how many months? Three months. It's already what? Bringing seed. But after that three months, uh, after the seed, uh, the fruit, what will happen? It dies. But a palm tree, after five years, by the time it starts to bring forth fruit, it will produce fruit for the next 28 to 30 years. When you abide in Christ, you will bring forth fruit for the rest of your life. It says, abide, stay put. When you are planted in the house of the Lord, you abide in him. It says, you will flourish. Where? Not outside the court, but in the courts of our God. You want to bear fruit. Church, this is the gospel truth. You need to abide. You need to be planted. Number two. I have to move very quickly. We have other things to do. Number two. You are not just going to be planted. Amen. You must also sow your seed. You must also plant. Amen. You must abide. You must be planted. But you must also plant. You need to also sow your seed. There can be no harvest if there is no seed in the ground. Hello? I'm sure I have a testimony. If there is no seed in the ground, there will be no harvest. And so, I can decree and prophesy. And I've said this, prophecies are not self-fulfilling. But when you take the necessary step, the word will work for you. You need to sow your seed. In Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Say so to yourself in righteousness. In order for you to reap the fruit of unfailing love. When you don't sow, there will be no harvest. Be fruitful. God has already decreed. But where is the seed? 
If there is no seed in the ground, there will be no harvest. Hallelujah. In the book of Psalm 126, Psalm 126 from verse 5. The book of Psalm 126 from verse 5 to verse 6. It says, they that sow in tears. It did not say those who pray. It did not say those who fast. But yes, we'll talk about that another day. When we're talking of seeds. Dimensions of the seed. The different kinds of seed. But you need to put a seed in the ground. And it says, as long as you are sowing, even if it is in tears, you will reap in joy. Look at verse 6. They that sow in tears shall reap with joy. In that go forth and weep, bearing what? What seed do you have in your hands? Brethren, what seed do you have in your heart? Because the law of harvest is universal. When you sow, you will reap. So please tell your neighbor, be careful what you sow. Because seed we always yield. When you sow in tears, you will reap with joy. They that go forth and weep it, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bearing their harvest, their sheaves with them. Conditions for fruitfulness. You need to plant, sow your seed. Number three, let's move on. You need to serve God diligently. You see, after you have planted, after you have sowed your seed, go and ask the, the farmer. Amen. Amen. They will not just put the seed in the ground. They will continue to what? To water it, to till it, to take care of it. I'm here to tell someone, service, uh, the, the, the psalmist says in Psalm 100, Psalm 100 verse 2, it says, serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Serve the Lord. How? How? When you are sowing your seed, serve with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. When you serve him, Amen. His service is also a seed. If you don't know that, your service in the house of God is also a seed. When you serve your gift, everyone can never forget the labor of your love. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you serve your seed, when you serve the Lord with your talent, with your time, with your, we're not talking of money alone. With your seed, there are dimensions of giving, of seed. There are also diverse soil of seed, you know, where you can sow. That's not the focus today. But you don't want to sow on the rock. You want your seed to be planted where? In a fertile ground. That's why if you go back to that Psalm 92 from verse 12. It says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord. Where is your seed? Where is your soil? <laughs> Hallelujah. On fertile ground. Those who are planted will continue to flourish in the court of our God, not outside of the vine. Look at verse 14. It says, when you continue to serve, even in your old age, you will still bring forth fruits. You will continue to be fat. You will continue to flourish. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. It says you will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Why? That's why that verse 13 says, because you are planted. When you continue to serve, it is your service. You see, uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, I believe it's chapter 3 from verse 6, uh, verse 6, 7. It says, Paul may 
plants. Apollo may water. Who gives the increase? When you plant and you now continue to serve, hallelujah, your seed will always bear fruit. Go and ask Dorcas. When she died, all those widows petitioned heaven. Someone can die and will keep quiet, not this one. What will your seed speak on your behalf? I'm here to tell someone. I don't want you to just hear this word and think and assume. And I kept saying this. God is a God of principle. When you follow the principle of his word, the word will work and there will be answer. And yes, there are times in which you will stand on the word. It may take a while. He says, do it, tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will speak for itself. There are situations in which, you see, when God showed up, like I said, you know, earlier, when God showed up, you see, when the professionals are saying, no, the lung has collapsed, the kidney, the, because of the amount of water, that doctor said, no, it is not possible for all of this organ to, even if they will function, maybe in six months, he may probably come out of coma. He may not even have his memory. He may not. I'm telling you, in less than 24 hours, everything, God is the one that will turn the wisdom of the wise to foolishness. And you are thinking that God does not remember you. Please, abide. Sow your seed and continue to serve and see whether God will show up for you or not. Because he's not a man that will lie concerning his word. That would take me to what the Lord said for someone. Over the weekend while I was praying, I'm not going to tell you, but I will, he asked you, he made to ask you a question. But the Lord told me something. In the book of Isaiah chapter 60, Verse 22. Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22. It says, A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. It says, I, the Lord, will hasten it in his own time. And so the question the Lord asked me to ask you is this Are you ready for your overflow? Are you ready for your overflow? Yes. I said I will not tell you what the Lord says specifically. But this has to do with what you are sowing. Amen. Amen. The Lord also said in Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 11. Deuteronomy 1 11. The Lord also said I should tell someone. Since I will make you a thousand times Blessed. He says, I'm the God of your father, and I will make you a thousand times blessed. I will bless you a thousand times. What does that mean? Where your generation, your lineage, would never imagine or think, but the blessings of the Lord. The Lord said, I will take you dear. Listen. He now says, I will take you there effortlessly, Amen. without struggle. Amen. The spirit of ease. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us today. We hope your Bethel experience was blessed. Join us next time here in the sanctuary. You can drive in, carpool, or reach out to our transportation team for assistance. Our services hold every Sunday at 10 a.m. Stay connected via our social media platforms and visit our website at www.rccgbethelassembly.org. See you next time.